Chip Berg, take us through the life of a pair of blue jeans from uh, you know, cotton in the field to they go into a consumer's closet. You know, Levi's has been a leader in sort of measuring and understanding the full life cycle of the products it makes. That's right. Um, <clears throat> making a pair of jeans, as I've come to discover over the last 18 months, is actually a pretty complex process, uh, going all the way back to the cotton that's grown. And one of the things about this company is we are heavily dependent on cotton. About 95% of all of the product that we sell is cotton-based. Um, we also take the manufacture of our product very, very seriously uh, and its sustainability impact. Um, and we're a big believer in having it underpinned by science. Um, one of the things that we did a couple of years ago is a full life cycle analysis of where energy and where water is consumed through the life cycle of a pair of jeans. And uh, a couple of fun facts out of that. First of all, 60% of the energy is actually used once the consumer has the product in their, in their wardrobe, in their closet. So a big chunk of the energy is consumed by the <coughs> consumer. Uh, the second big fun fact is um, because we're so uh, dependent on cotton, uh, about 50% of the water use happens before the product ever winds up in a pair of jeans. It happens in the growing of the cotton itself. Um, the other 45% of cotton, uh, of water use, happens once it's in the consumer's home. About 5% is within our direct control. So we've put a lot, based on that science, we've put a lot of effort into uh, educating the consumer and working with our suppliers in the supply chain to really tackle the opportunity to uh, make a more positive impact on the world uh, and you know, make an impact from a sustainability standpoint. And part of that is washing <coughs> jeans less frequently, right? So getting, which I, I don't know how that went over in your house, but yeah. Um, yeah, so I've got a, a, a little story on that. Um, well, two stories. Um, <laughs> first of all, are there any real denim heads? I call them denim heads, like real hardcore denim people in the audience. Do you guys wash your jeans at all? <laughs> So true denim heads will never people. put their jeans in a pair, in, into a washing machine. Um, they might spot clean it with, uh, with a washcloth or a toothbrush or something, but... Um, I've heard of people put them in the freezer to kill it. Yeah? No? Yeah, some people do. Um, okay. uh, the, other, the other story, and I told you this uh, when we talked earlier, um, we actually uh, engage consumers, but also our own employees with challenges. And we ran a challenge uh, back in the springtime, challenging our employees, and, and we've got 17,000 employees around the world, to wear one pair of jeans or one pair of dockers for a week without washing them. And I know it sounds gross. I'm thinking that's you know not what? that long. It, <laughs> it's not that long, and it's easily doable. And uh, it, 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 it taught a lot of people about the real feasibility of doing that. And um, so that's part of... It's about engaging in a two-way dialogue and continuing to educate the consumer on how they can make a difference with their own practices. Rick Ridgway, uh, Patagonia is a leader in that kind of engagement with its customers uh, in some ways that are kind of scary for companies. You actually include customers in conversations about the products you make, uh, whether uh, Patagonia should continue uh, making a jacket uh, that has a waterproof substance that's quite toxic. Um, why do you do that? Well, a few years ago, we um, realized, just as the recession was starting to hit hard, that there was a shift in consumption uh, going on, just amongst a small group of people. But we felt it was a potentially really important shift, where people were reacting to hard times by investing in uh, more expensive products that would last a longer time, that they were recognizing that value proposition. So we wanted to engage with those people. Those were, those were our, our folks. We also realized that that's just a small part of it, that we needed to engage with our customers over, as Chip just said, the full life cycle of our products. So whether uh, or not you buy a quality product or whether you buy anything at all in the first place is just step one. Once you do make the decision to buy it, then we wanted to encourage our customers to use it as much as they could for as long as they could. We want to encourage them to uh, repair it if it's broken, and then we wanted to help them fix it. So we really repaired our repair facility. And 
since we launched this initiative called Common Threads, this partnership with our customers, that repair facility has more than doubled uh, its business, as it were. We also want to encourage people to clean out their closets and their garages and take the clothes that are in there that they're no longer using and put them back in circulation. So to make that easier, we formed a partnership with eBay to uh, create a storefront, as it were, on eBay where uh, if you took a pledge towards mutual responsibility for your stuff, uh, your Patagonia product would go in this storefront on eBay and uh, it would be a storefront that would allow you to tell more stories about your product and maybe enhance the value that way. But also, most importantly, we would co-list your product on Patagonia.com and give you double the eyeballs. <coughs> That's gone really well. The amount of Patagonia products on eBay since we launched has, has also more than doubled. Uh, and then finally, we wanted to encourage people to uh, take this, their clothes when they're really worn out at the end of their life and bring them back to us. And, we'll use the best technology available to, uh, to recycle them. So that's the Common Threads partnership. Uh, we put the pledge out on our website a year ago. We've got uh, about 60,000 people now that have taken that pledge and join us in this mutual responsibility part. And the most controversial part of this is, is the, the decision whether to buy anything in the first place or not. And to launch this partnership a year ago, we took out a, a full page ad in the New York Times which I know a lot of you guys probably saw, um, it was uh, on Black Friday. And when we called up the New York Times to reserve the space for the ad, they got all excited because they thought they had a new advertising customer. And they were kind of shocked when they got the ad because it had a picture of our best-selling jacket and then in bold headline above it said, don't buy this jacket. <laughs> and then under it was a message about what consumption is doing to our planet and how, you know, if we go from seven to nine billion people in the next 40 years and if the affluence of those people grows 3% per annum compounded, that we're going to go from our current overreach of using one and a half planets a year to support our human society to five or seven planets. And you don't need to be a businessman to know, you don't need an MBA to know that that's bankruptcy. And that's what the copy said underneath. So we were encouraging people to begin to think about consumption, to begin to think about whether you need to buy anything at all in the first place. And a lot of people took us up on that, you know. But a lot of people. <laughs> so we, are we, you saying that the sales of those jackets went down, or did people say, "Well, no, I'm they buy kind of stayed the same," which was really interesting. Okay. So some people took us up on it. Some thought they were so stoked about, uh, you know, the moxie of a company telling people not to buy it that they would buy it. And sure enough, a lot of people said, "You guys are the biggest hypocrites on the planet." Like. Like, this is the most clever reverse psychology ad that's ever been, <laughs> right, 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 ever right. been done. Right. But so, we were, we're, we're serious about this topic.